Central Asia has been attracting adventurers since the times of Marco Polo. In their notes, medieval mavericks filled this semi-mythical area of the world's end with fantastic creatures and unprecedented miracles and riddles. To this day, this mysterious region attracts Western tourists with its landscapes and biological diversity. Together with the Outdoor KZ Permanent TV Expedition, you will travel to the most picturesque corners of Central Asia, get acquainted with its flora and fauna, and immerse yourselves in the everyday life and traditions of the people living in the wild. Where does the master of the mountain tops live? What is the highest summit of the northern Tian Shan? What were Salteres Sapabaev and Nikolai Knazev searching for in the upper streams of the left Talga? Who attacked the cow? What is the difference between ancient Talkirs and modern Talga? How many years one needs to catch snow leopard on camera in its habitat? What is the proper way of crossing a mountain river? To answer these and other questions, the Outdoor KZ team is heading to Almaty Reserve. The Talga River originates in the glaciers of the Talga mountain range the largest center of modern-day glaciation in the northern Tian Shan Mountains. Its highest summit, the peak of Talgar, is surrounded by over 60 glaciers with a total area of 150 square kilometers. Glaciers seem still and static only at first sight. If you film a glacier with a camera and speed up the video, you'll see that, in fact, they move all the time and never ever stop. Water flows even being in a solid state. While glaciers flow into valleys, new snow collects on mountaintops and, in the course of years, turns into ice. Some glaciers are hundreds of meters thick. In history, there were periods when ice on peaks accumulated faster than thawed, which led to glaciers advancing. And vice versa, there were times when water discharge exceeded its accumulation and the area of glaciers contracted. The three tops of the Talga peak up to 15,000 feet high apparently surpass the European Mont Blanc, wrote Pyotr Petrovich Simeon of Tenshansky in 1957. The scientist described Talga during his first journey to the area, but couldn't determine its precise height and geographical coordinates, not being a topographer and lacking corresponding tools. One and a half years later, the severe Alexander Fyodorovich Golubev did it. In the mid-20th century, the height of the Talga peak was 5,017 meters above sea level. By now, it's gone down to 4,979. Comparing modern satellite imagery with the last century maps, it becomes clear that the glacier's configuration has significantly changed. In the last 50 years, the Talga's ice cap shrinked and the peak grew shorter. Just recently, scientists began to understand the close interconnections between such phenomena as climate change, glaciation, water balance, and biological diversity. Every morning, sunshine heats the southern slopes of mountains, drops of water gather in streams, streams form rivers, rivers irrigate valleys, animals and humans settle in valleys and give birth to cities and states. Centuries pass and the sands of time sweep ancient civilizations. Nonetheless, the river continues to flow, and life in its valley will continue as long as the mountains continue sharing their life-giving moisture with us. The Transiliala Tau stretches for 380 kilometers in latitudinal direction. Its foothills host more than 100 villages and cities, including the multi-million Almaty agglomeration. According to archaeological research, rock paintings and historical finds testify to the fact that humans had been living in the Transiliala Tau area since extreme antiquity. We are on the Talga River bank where it enters the foothill plain. Currently, the valley is home to a town with the same name, the administrative center of Talga district of Omti region. How old is it? 
Talga received its modern name in 1928. Prior to that, here stood the village of Safiskoye, and in the Middle Ages, the same city was referred to in various sources as Talkiz or Talkir. It was an important hub on the Great Silk Way. Archaeologists had found the remains of a clay water supply system diverting water from the Talga River to the houses of the city residents. In 2014, the 38th UNESCO session that took place in Doha, the capital of Qatar, entered Talkis into the World Heritage List. Archaeological finds lead scientists to conclusions not only about the life and culture of long-gone civilizations, but also about the fauna that inhabited these mountains and foothill valleys in the olden days. The majestic snow leopard has always personified power, force and might, and continues to do so as one of the main national symbols of Kazakhstan. And their protection is our sacred duty. The Almaty State Reserve was established to protect the snow leopard and other animals living in the Transali Alatau. The valleys of the Issyk, right, middle and left Talga rivers have been enjoying the status of nature reserves for over 80 years. Tourists are allowed to walk the eco tracks located on the territory of the reserve. But in order to do so, they need to stop by the Department of Environmental Education and get the necessary permits. The best place to start your acquaintance with the Transili Alatau Wildlife is the Reserves Museum. The Nature Museum of the Almaty State Park was founded in 1967 and now our museum has over 3,000 exhibits, including the avian and insect collections. Here you can see our collection of mushrooms. The zoologists of the past faced a tough task of streamlining and structuring the animal and plant worlds. They needed to find and define thousands of various species. Zoological connections were exactly the tool that aided scientists in their job. Modern zoology is gradually shifting towards new research methods. All these collections were collected in the 60s of the last century, when the replenishment of collections was allowed. And now it is not recommended to do it. We think we have enough physical exhibits and supplement our collections with the imagery we get from our photo and video recorders. Scientific and informative or educational tourism is becoming increasingly popular. People no longer want to just walk across gorgeous landscapes, but are eager to learn something new about the nature. The story of the Almaty Reserve was not an easy one. Established in 1931, in several years it grew to cover 600,000 hectares, and in 1940 its area was already 1 million hectares. In 1949, as per Stalin's personal order, 100 reserves, including the one near Almaty, were closed. It was reopened only in 1961, and its current area is about 71,000 hectares. The purpose of our reserve is to preserve the nature in its original state. We have 20 inspectors, the science department and the department of eco-education. Wildlife reference sites are necessary for scientists to be able to compare them with the landscapes that humans had already irreversibly changed due to their activities. Scientists from the University of Oxford brought us a special program. We installed the photo traps and analyzed the images from them. We caught some snow leopards on camera, some of them even three times, and started to distinguish them by different sport patterns. In our reserve, there are 28 registered individual animals, which is very good, I think. 
The Reserve's Science Department has celebrated its 85th anniversary. In the course of its existence, many prominent scientists had worked here and conducted multiple researches. Santoria Sapabayev, our senior research associate, is working specifically on snow leopard. He has a lot of energy and is expecting the mountains all the time. He has made many great pictures. I did a search on Google on how many crowned persons live nowadays in the world. About 200 kings and queens. When it comes to people who manage to catch snow leopard on camera, in the nature, the fingers on just one hand will be enough. One of them is Saltorea Sapabayev. And today we will try to persuade him to take our journalist Baljan Baltasheva with him. I have been working in the reserve since 2005. And only once, in 2012, I had seen it and taken its photo. It was a memorable day for me. In the reserve and in general in other especially protected areas where snow leopard lives, inspectors, experts, research associates can be working in the mountains for years. 20 to 30 years in a row and never see a snow leopard. There are people who think that you can catch snow leopard on camera by accident or luck. But we believe that Saltera's example is the natural result of persistence and hard work. I love my job. For me it is more like a state of mind. My family and friends didn't understand me when I just started working in the Almaty Reserve and would spend a lot of time in the mountains. Now, thanks to my pictures and my knowledge, they are beginning to understand and don't resist my going to the mountains. Will you take me with you? I saw an Agali and a ground jay already, but have never seen a snow leopard in my life. And are you aware that the conditions in the mountains are rather extreme? Are you ready for this? Of course. How can I miss such an opportunity? So is there really a chance of taking its picture? Of course, there is always a chance. Beginners usually get lucky, as they say. I myself have been walking the mountains for eight years now, in winter and in summer, and can boast of only one encounter. So, zoologist Saltere Sapabayev, videographer Nikolai Knyazev, ornithologist Amanbol Sayakano Lee and the outdoor KZ team are heading to the mountains. All entry and exit points of the reserve are controlled by these special checkpoints. Horseback and pedestrian inspection groups regularly patrol the mountain tracks. The road extends along the left Talga but stops after several kilometers coming to the last cordon. For the most part, the reserve doesn't even have horse tracks, so the only way to get around is on foot. At the cordon, our research team meets inspectors Saul Khan Mushanov and Aidos Alibayev. According to the tradition of mountain hospitality, first of all you need to feed your guests and only then talk business. So Alkan Mushanov tells the guys an amazing story. At 4 o'clock a.m., Idos comes running in and says that our cow is making strange sounds. We go to the shed and see that something has seized it by its throat. At first we thought it was a wolf, but after a more careful inspection it appeared it was a snow leopard. After that we went outside. The shed had an iron door so we started kicking it and making noise. The cow stopped braying. When we entered the shed again, the snow leopard had already gone. It was gone. I was scared when I saw it for the first time as I thought it could attack people. A local huntsman told us that a snow leopard came to the settlement and nearly killed a cow. So we came here to look for it. So yes, it is somewhere there, in the direction of Kokuzen. Let's have lunch and be on our way. 
green grass has already appeared on the southern slopes, whereas the northern ones are still covered with snow. Snow can stay in the upper streams of the river until midsummer. The Talga has a whimsical character. At times, it's nice and quiet and its water is crystal clear. But after a heavy rain, the river's temper sharply spoils. The water duckens and gets a coffee shade to it and the river roars like a wild animal. As at Vivaldi violin concerts, while in the mountains you can find yourself in all four seasons simultaneously. While in valleys flowers begin to blossom and bumblebees are already buzzing around, the mountain summits are still blown over with piercing blizzards. A minute ago the sun was shining brightly and now it is already snowing. When the weather spoils, hoofed animals and following them snow leopards descend to lower mountain belts. When it gets warm, they all go back up. After winter hibernation, the hungry bear wakes up. The Transiliyalatau Mountains are inhabited by the Tianshan white-clawed subspecies, listed in the National Red Book. In the fall, bears go high up into the mountains and arrange their dens in the alpine belt, sometimes over 3,000 meters above sea level. Bears' hibernation is not an abiosis, like in many rodents, but merely a deep sleep. Bears sleep tight and sometimes even snore. In the spring, the she-bear leaves her den with one or two bear cubs. Bear is a predator and under certain conditions, it can compete for food with snow leopard, although quite rarely. Each species has its own environmental niche. The conflicts between bears is a totally different matter. This is an adult male. To accumulate enough fat for the winter, it needs to eat at least 700 kilograms of nuts, mushrooms, berries and other food. Therefore, bears vigilantly protect their feeding grounds from competitors. And if a stranger violates the borders, most likely there will be a fight. There is only a one-month exception for females in June. The males become more hospitable and during this time don't mind sharing food stocks with ladies. During any other time, female bears with their cubs prefer to avoid males. U.S. scientists have been studying bears in Alaska by means of radio chips. They found out that with age, the character of males becomes corrupt and many of them begin to sin with cannibalism. On occasion, they can even devour their own cubs. Nothing like that when it comes to relations with snow leopard, absolute adherence to the policy of valid neutrality. These two large predators can coexist within one and the same area and never attack each other. Snow leopards can jump as far as 7 meters. In other words, jumping over the Talgar is a piece of cake for them, whereas our team has to face the challenge right on. In the past, somewhere here there was a log over to the other side, but it appears it was washed away by the spring flood. Perhaps the leopard has gone over to the left bank. What about us? Salterea notices some movement on the opposite side of the river. Could it be our snow leopard? Let's try getting closer. Stones are slippery. No room for being careless. One wrong move and you'll end up in the river. And he did it again. Our operator has the talent of getting himself into every trouble possible. Dipping in the mountain river in this weather is not the best way of studying the snow leopard. 
What should the second operator do in this situation? Help the companion or capture the accident on camera? A true journalist, no doubt, will go for the second option. Maxim needs to set up the camp and dry his clothes. Salto Re, Nikolai and Aman Bol cannot interrupt the quest for Snow Leopard because of the little addition adventure that our operator got into. They promise snow tomorrow. I didn't get a picture of Snow Leopard, it's a minus. But I'm alive, that's a plus. Let the guys look for the animal and I will try to get warm in my tent. The expedition has temporarily lost one of its participants but courageously continues on its way. The researchers have been wandering around the forest for quite some time, but no traces of snow leopard can be seen yet. It's an extremely cautious creature. It hides and observes the people from a reliable shelter. You can pass by it several meters away, but still not notice a thing. What about lunch? 1.5 hours. Saltere and I will make another round along the river and you will have enough time for cooking. We will do another 5 kilometers and will be very glad to have some of your great porridge upon coming back. I also want to go. Who will cook lunch then? I really wanted to join you. The research passion prevails, but during expeditions food also takes a very important place. Working in an office, a person needs about 2,000 calories per day, while in the mountains we spend 2 calories for each meter of elevation. Baljan is going back to the camp to organize some food and the guys are walking up along the river. At times, the path curls along the river bank, but sometimes it stops with abrupt bottlenecks. Santere and Nikolai notice some movement on the slope between the trees. Filming wild animals, photographers have to always keep their equipment ready, as the filming object may appear unexpectedly. Just in case, we need to be on alert. If this is really a leopard, our encounter may be rather fleeting. A greyish spot flickers in the thickets. No doubt, it is a snow leopard. The wind favors the researchers too, otherwise the animal would have noticed them long time ago and disappeared as suddenly as it had appeared. It looks like it is still concerned with something. It slowly changed its course and went uphill. For some time the leopard dropped out of sight but re-emerged a minute later in the glade between the trees. That was it. Our meeting lasted for a mere several minutes, but every bit of the effort spent was definitely worth it. Nikolai and Saltere make a video report of the meeting. We caught it in an open area across the river, have taken a couple of shots, but it didn't stay with us for too long and disappeared in the woods. It's time to go back to the camp and please our companions.
Did you get it? Yes, we did in fact. Are you kidding me? Seriously? No joke. Have a look. What do you say? Why didn't you take me with you? I could have taken a couple pictures too. We couldn't risk it. Wow, that is so cool. Maybe I still have time. Don't think so. It's gone. I have been photographing since childhood with the old cameras at that time. Smena 8 was my first one. After that I had used all the Zenith modifications. I love mountains, photographing birds and animals. Working as a huntsman in the Almaty State Reserve, I got acquainted with an exceptional person, Fedosenko Alexander Kirillovich. For several years I had been going on inspections with him, and we'd taken many great pictures. There were boars and even a leopard hunting when it put down a teke. But my dream was to make my own shot. In 2007 I got serious about it together with Salta Re. But we just couldn't get it for some reason. This year we did manage to catch a leopard in the wild nature. I hope it wasn't the last time. In general, how difficult is it? Taking account of the fact that in the course of 11 years it was the first such visual contact, I can say yes, it is hard. I had a couple of times at night, it passed me but the light gathering power of my lenses was not enough. A couple of glimpses also. Still it's my first fully fledged encounter with snow leopard in the nature, in 11 years. It's not easy. To take a picture of a snow leopard, you need to possess a certain experience, knowledge of its habits, its environment, what does it eat and where does it usually live. It is impossible to do it by storm. You would waste all your life hoping for blind luck. Nevertheless, we are really glad that we got lucky. So many impressions, so many things to talk about in a warm company in the evening in the camp. The life of wildlife photographers is full of remarkable events worth sharing with each other. I did catch it on camera, although it was for a very short time. It escaped really quickly, but I hope there will be more encounters. I am an ornithologist and thus snow leopards are beyond my professional scope. Nevertheless, meeting a snow leopard is really cool. It is extremely interesting to investigate this animal. The young zoologists are listening to the stories of the old inspector about his recent missions with famous scientists. Nikolai has many stories about his expeditions with Alexander Fedosenko in stock. Those who are keen on it can read them all in the books by the famous nature scientist. Once upon a time, Alexander Kirillovich Fedosenko and I had a case. The leopard brought down a teke right in front of our eyes. In fact, we helped it. We scared the herd of teke coming up the slope. They started to ascend, and so the leopard got a really good hunt. So it brought down the teke, crushed it, and was taking a rest. And before leaving, Alexander Kirillovich, it was not my fault, suggested us cutting off the teke's thigh and taking it with us. He said, teke had way too much meat for a snow leopard and that we could make really good use of the gaskin. We approached it, but it didn't want to move and give away its meat. It growled and hissed. We were forced to make noise with our tripods to drive it away. So we took our teke thigh and quickly escaped the place. Maybe not all Kazakhstan citizens are fated to see snow leopard in the nature, but the fact that we can still meet this magnificent cat in our mountains does make the life of each of us a little brighter. The night is going over the gorge. The mountain woods get filled with the night rustle. It feels so good sitting on a river bank, looking at the nightly starry sky and repeating the verse by Boris Pasternak in your mind. The nature, the world, the secret universe. I will complete your lengthy service filled with intimate shiver and tears of happiness.